So this is a heat of the Thames Challenge Cup between the Thames, uh, between Oslo in Norway and Quintin Boat Club, uh, based on the Tideway uh, in, in London. See the cops with their hands just coming down to let the umpire know they're ready. Oh, and the Quinton Cox just went to put a hand up in the air there just as the umpire was saying go. Let's hope it won't disturb them. They seem to have got a pretty solid start if they make the way down Temple Island. Yeah, it's hard to tell whether that in the first few strokes affected, affected the eight or not, although it does look like there's a, a little bit of steering going off just after a few strokes. Yeah, we know the rudder on the back of the boat will slow you down. It acts as a brake to, to change direction. And the crews steer along Temple Island here. And I always think on the station on the right, the Buck Station, there's a temptation to get pushed away from the island. You can't be brave enough staying in close and tight to the island on this side. I think just a little bit of steering um, from Hazel Wilson in the coxing seat of the Quinton crew will have uh, just made it a little bit harder for their crew coming up the island. Now they come out and they're, uh, they're into the main body of the River Thames here and uh, we can see the crew from Oslo really moving away nicely. Yeah, and a huge boost for Oslo there because they're going to get not only the, the, the lead that gives them the chance to relax but also the opportunity to think about rowing their own race and, you know, it's early to call a win here but with that, with that lead they're going to be feeling more and more confident and they can have the opportunity to watch the crew they're trying to beat, which is crucial. Yeah, that's it. They, they really want to break contact now. They've got that little bit of clear water, and I think it's an important phase of the race now if Quinton are to stay in this to try to keep as much contact between their bow and their Oslo stern. But unfortunately for them, that Oslo stern is moving away as they come down here towards the barrier. And the, uh, the crew here from Quinton doing their very best. They, they look pretty tidy in terms of the way they're moving. Right? Yeah, they do. They look good. And if I was in the Quinton boat right now, I'd probably be thinking, right, get my head into a, a time trial situation. You haven't got the boat beside you that you might have expected. So just make sure from start to finish line, you've done everything you can. And there's a mixture of experience within the Quinton boat. Uh, up in the two seats, we've got... Uh, Kieran Brown, um, this is his first Henley, having only taken the sport up three years ago, um, through to more experienced experience further down in the boat, people who raced in the, the temple, um, raced for universities and now joining club rowing. Um, the crew on the right from NSR Oslo um, are have experienced Henley campaigners, uh, winners of the Britannia Challenge Cup in 2017, uh, that's for Cox Fours. Uh, finalists in the event in 2016 and uh, the Oslo crew have been going very fast in the lead up to Henley uh, where they raced at Ratzeburg finishing eight behind the Oxford Brooks crew who we know are flying and crews from Germany, Poland and China. We can just see now the occasional stroke from Quinton Boat Club that the, the balance is slightly off whether that's a little bit of wash coming from the side or a little bit of steering. You can see they're going smoothly for a few, for a few strokes and then occasionally just a few blades not quite in time. Yeah, and, and you just have to do nothing to slow the boat down. And, and unfortunately, there's those little rolls when you look at the steadiness of the boat on the right of the screen from, from NSR Oslo. It's just flowing really nice and smoothly. And, and I think they've been able to just relax the stroke rate a bit, um, hold the rate down, but maintain the length as they're coming through Forley, which is halfway down the course. Um, it's a nice, nice opportunity to feel in as much control as you can here. Yeah, I think on a day like this and a row like this from Oslo, they get the opportunity to row down the course on race day, which is great mentally. But physically, they get that, that little bit of anticipation off the start. They get a few nerves out their system, but they're not too tired for the next set of races. So it's almost an ideal situation. Absolutely. And I think the, uh, the Oslo crew will be keen to enjoy their time here at Henley. Um, they've got quite a variety of personal interests. Um, including all sorts of things from um, uh, being the, the stroke man and uh, he's the second best hill cyclist in, in his club um, and he also claims to own four dogs all named after German single scholars. Um, so yeah, quite an, an interesting sort of list of uh, background activities they've provided us with. In amongst that, there's plenty of winter sports, as you would expect, from a crew in Oslo, um, as well as um, looking at seven man, Patrick Sturr, uh, who's competed in one junior and several under-23 world championships as a lightweight, now up to 78 kilograms. Um, so he's been able to pack the pounds on a little bit here 
to row at Henley, but also to sit in that seven seat. And I always think seven seat's fairly key to tie together the rhythm coming from the stroke and the power coming from the middle of the boat. It is, and when you look at the uh, the rate that they, they've adopted now, they've really come down to a strong, almost paddling rate, but with the power still in the water. And as they come down now, they'll be heading towards the, uh, the competitors' grandstand, um, which is one of those areas which, by the end of today, um, a good number of crews will have been knocked out, and the competitors' grandstand tends to get busier by this time of day, as, as people who've done their racing will have de-rigged their boats and put them on the trailer, and uh, the regatta starts to feel slightly less crowded around the boat tent enclosure, um, and uh, slightly more crowded in the... Uh, social areas of yeah. the regatta. I think it's worth remembering that for, you know these crews that get knocked out on days one and two actually for a lot of them getting here and getting a place at Henley is the you know the goal of the season and to be rowing down this course um, whether you're being beaten or not is a huge achievement. We had the Henley qualifiers on Friday afternoon into the evening and um, there was a fantastic entry in all of these events and to see the elation of the crews who've rowed in a time trial and been, been picked and qualified through that route to get to race here, this will, as you say, be a pinnacle uh, within their season to race here against this very classy crew here uh, from Norway who've made the trip over here and, and we're delighted to see them. Yeah, and if you're one of those crews that does the time trial to get into the Henley Regatta, then that almost is your, your peak of your season. That is the race you're aiming for. That's the race you need to nail, otherwise, otherwise you won't make the start line. And there's no feeling like getting that result when you've done a time trial and you just don't know how you've done and you get told you've made the regatta. And this, the Thames Cup, I think is one of those fantastic races with plenty of entries. So they know they've got to race all five days, 32 crews. So tomorrow they'll be into the round of 16 and uh, working their way through the regatta. And Oslo have done a nice job here of maintaining their form, maintaining a nice low stroke rate, long strokes, moving about a long way per stroke, as we see Fitton just coming across the line there. And uh, past our commentary position and confirmation there, a win for NSR Oslo from Norway over Quinton Bakker.